Mitch, it was a game of two halves on the weekend. What is it that the team needs to do to make sure you get the result tomorrow night? Um, bounce back. Um, it was obviously a disappointing start. Um, a massive build-up for us as a team. Um, and I think it just goes to show in this World Cup um, and in international cricket in general, if you're slightly off, um, they jumped us at the start and we're on the back foot from there on in. So hopefully we can bounce back against Sri Lanka. Um, they're a good side. Um, we know these conditions very well. Um, the stadium should suit us um, more than them. So um, hopefully we can bounce back and uh, get the World Cup underway. Do you think there will be personnel changes or will you stick with the same 11, do you think, and, and just really try and bounce back with the same group of guys? Yeah, I think, um, to my knowledge, we'll yeah, be playing the same 11, hopefully, and um, stay in the course. Mitch, uh, the other night, I think might have been a bit tongue in cheek, but you said uh, it's perfect situation with the team backs against the wall. But do you think that approach is something the team might have to adopt? Um, yeah, we don't really have a, a choice now. Um, I, I don't actually remember saying that. I think Zamps was throwing me under the bus there. Um, but uh, I'll take that one uh, for Zamps. But um, yeah, look, we the nature of the tournament, um, you lose one game. Your back is up, up against the wall and we know what's in front of us now. I think what's really important for us and we've spoken about it is not looking too far ahead. We've got Sri Lanka tomorrow night. That's all that matters for us. Um, hopefully we play well, get past that and then we move on to, to England. But given the scale of the defeat, do you think the, the confidence has been rattled at all uh, within the group? Um, definitely not. I think if you look down the, the personnel of our group, um, confidence is not something that um, all the boys are shy of. So I think it's just a um, really important to stick together. We know that our best is um, is up there with the best. So um, making sure we bring that tomorrow night, bring plenty of energy and um, hopefully put on a good show for the Perth crowd. Uh, Mitch, you got a good look at um, Hasaranga and, and Tikshana earlier this year. I mean, what are the, the key things against them um, and, and how different will it be playing them here compared to, you know, Colombo and, and Candia, I think it was. Yeah, I'm certainly hoping, um, well, I know for a fact that it won't be spinning as much as it was, what, it was over there so um, that's a plus in itself um, I think in general our team and the way we play we play spin very well certainly in Australian conditions so um, I'm looking forward to that challenge um, but you know we know that they're two world-class bowlers and Sri Lanka are a very dangerous side so um, we'll have to get our matchups right and make sure that we're on. What about Hasaranga in particular? Like, you know, you normally come here and you're talking about bounce and things like that he's kind of the opposite with you know how low he kind of bowls like what um you know how, how difficult or, or otherwise will that be uh yeah he's obviously a, a very good bowler um and someone that will have to, to counteract um you know hopefully spin doesn't play a huge factor out at per stadium um and we can look to really attack them um they're their two key bowlers that we can get on top of them then i think we'll be ahead of the game uh, Mitch, you had a sort of a bit of an interruption sort of coming in. Do you still feel on the peak of your game or do you still think that you're um, uh, on the rise towards the peak of your game? Um, yeah, hopefully I just uh, build the whole way through the tournament. But um, yeah, certainly a couple of my innings to begin with against England, I felt really good. Um, I'm feeling great. I'm yeah, back bowling this game, available to bowl. Um, so um, I love sort of preparing as an all-rounder and making sure I'm in the game the whole time. But um, I'm feeling great and... Hopefully I can contribute a few big scores up the top and maybe chip in with a few wickets. And given Perth Stadium's new and given the COVID restrictions we've had the last couple of years, there uh, hasn't been a lot played here. Does it uh, a genuine home ground advantage to, for Australia and particularly for the West Australians like yourself, do you think? Yeah, I think it has. I think if you look back at the Scorchers' first couple of years, we couldn't win a game here. Um, so we thought we were cursed. But um, the last couple of years, certainly before COVID, we turned that around. It's a great place to play cricket. Um, it's similar to the Gabba. Um, I love the dimensions of the ground um, and, and we play very well here. So I'm, I'm hopeful that it's a home game advantage and we can um, start our World Cup. And do you think um, the fast bowlers uh, are a real chance of uh, stitching up the Sri Lankans here, given the, the pace and bounce we traditionally see in Perth? Yeah, I'm hopeful. Um, we'll certainly have an aggressive approach. We know that the, uh, the big three bowlers, when they get going, um, they're very hard to stop. And I think certainly after the other night, um, we'll see a, a big response from them. Mitch, Ricky Potting threw his support behind Cameron Green uh, yesterday saying he'd be a good acquisition, could really blow the, the World Cup open for Australia, given local boy knows the ground conditions. Would you like to see Cam come in and, and play a role? Um, 
Yes and no. Uh, yes, because he's an unbelievable talent. No, because it probably means he takes my spot. So um, we've had words about that. I just told him to, to calm down a bit and give me another few weeks. Then it's all his. Um, but look, I think anytime you've got someone like him on the sidelines, it's good. It's great. It creates pressure in, within the group. Um, but, you know, we're all as one. We know that throughout this tournament, things may happen. Injuries, with so much travel, um, games back to back. So he'll be ready for his opportunity if it comes. Um, but for now, I think we've got the right 11. And in terms of just the form, obviously the lead up series, they don't count for anything, but winless through that against England and now obviously the disappointment on Saturday. How close do you feel as though the team is to performing? And, you know, do you look into that and think, well, why isn't it clicking at the moment? Um, it's a good question. Um, I, I think that we've got a lot of confidence in our group that um, once we get on a roll, we're going to be very hard to stop. Um, we had so much cricket in the lead up to the game. We had guys in and out, in and out. It was all about building to the World Cup. Um, and obviously we hadn't didn't start well the other night, but um, we've got great self-belief. Um, we, as I said before, we know our best is um, the best in the world. Um, so hopefully uh, we can turn it around against Sri Lanka and, um, yeah, and really show them. What do you make of history? Because there's an element that it's on your side because you lost your, your first game last year and went on to win it, but no host nations ever won the T20 World Cup. Which way do you go to? <laughs> Well, hopefully um, it's it's something that you always want to talk about, you want to think about, but ultimately we need to get past Sri Lanka first um, before we start thinking about any of those sort of records or stats. Um, so we've spoken about it. We know what's in front of us. Um, obviously you want to win any World Cup, let alone a home World Cup, um, but ultimately we need to get past Sri Lanka tomorrow. Me next. Yep. Um, you spoke about Cam Green on the sideline, but what's it like having Steve Smith on the sideline? Is he extra annoying not playing or is he less so? Um, oh, it's certainly nice not having to run gloves out to him every five minutes, um, but he's been fantastic um, for someone who's literally done everything in the game, has a wealth of experience and probably in any other side in the world would be a walk-up start. Um, he's been terrific around the group, um, providing lots of energy on the bench and um, you'd expect nothing less from someone like Steve. I hate to ask it, but Faf de Plessis' excerpt of his book came out yesterday. And would that be a little bit of a distraction or how do you stay focused with some of the stuff that came out from that excerpt? Uh, I'm not a big reader, so I'm not sure what's coming out there. But um... it, was, uh, it was a bit more about around Sandpaper Gate and um, uh, identifying uh, David Warner and, and Mitchell Stark in his book um, and how the, closely, like the South Africans were watching them back then. How much of a distraction is it? with those sorts of things coming up around a World Cup? Um, well, yeah, as you probably just saw, not nothing because I haven't seen anything or read anything. So um, we've got a we've got a World Cup to focus on as a group. We're solely focused on that. And we're a really close group and tight-knit group. So um, I'm just looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Mitch, your own personal form, do you feel like this is a, a perfect opportunity for yourself to kickstart your tournament after an inter interrupted sort of lead up? You've played probably more cricket on this ground than anyone else tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just love playing here, love playing in front of my family, uh, friends and the uh, and West Australian crowd. So, um, yeah, I love batting on this wicket. I think it's the best wicket in the world. Um, you know, bounce, carry, ball flies off the bat. Um, they're big boundaries, but... Um, I don't worry about that. So um, I love batting here and hopefully uh, I can contribute to a win. And bowling wise, do you know what, what the plans are? Do you know whether you'll, um, you'll bowl in the power play or death or anything like that? Or are you sort of pretty flexible at this stage? Yeah, I've offered to bowl the first over, but I keep getting shut down. So um, yeah, I'll just be available to bowl. We know that we try and get one over out of our, out of Stoin or myself or even Maxi at times in the power play. And then it's just about being flexible throughout the middle, um, depending on how the game goes and, I think with me bowling, um, it gives us that added flexibility of um, myself, Maxi, or Stoin can get four overs out and, and we can bowl anywhere. So um, it gives us great flexibility. Mitch, um, did you watch the game last night? Uh, what did you make of it? And do you think, given that you guys had an off day on the first day, that match kind of lit up the tournament? Yeah, I actually think we should just stop the World Cup there. Um, if it gets any better than that, we're in for an amazing three weeks. Um, India Pakistan is always an incredible game to to watch. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like to have been in that crowd and and to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, amazing. Virat Kohli's been through a in different twelve months when you think about his career, um, and for him to do that 
um, you know, put his mark on the World Cup and it was an incredible innings to watch and um, an incredible game. So hopefully there's a few more of those. Just wondering if, you know, the guy like Virat has a space or a spot in the team and why why can't have Steve Smith have a place in that squad? I mean, similar player, you know, Kane also plays for New Zealand. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you look down at our team, we've got a pretty incredible um, batting lineup for a T20 side. Um, we've gone a, with Tim David coming to the side, we've gone sort of um, hitter heavy towards the back end of the game, which I think will be really important if we can get off to a good start on the Australian ground. So, um, as I, as I said before, you know, um, we're early on in the tournament, things may change, but for now, I think we've got to really set 11 and, um, and one that I truly believe in. Yes. Just following on from your your ankle injury, I guess we expected you back bowling a bit earlier. Can you talk us through that? And, and was there a bit of a delay there for any reason? Um, no, no delay. Um, probably more so just with the nature of coming back in and playing. And we had basically play, travel, play, travel. Um, it was kind of hard to get a bit of training in whilst you're trying to recover and get up for the next game. So um, probably yeah, 10, two weeks ago, we, game two was the... Um, the game that I wanted to be back for before I went to plan. Um, and yeah, the ankle's um, feeling pretty good now, so I'm ready to go. And, and following on from Beck's question about the, the FAF comments, no doubt that'll get back to, to Warner. What can you tell us about his ability to just keep those distractions out? What, what does he do to make sure it doesn't affect him in, in that manner? Um, I can't really say what he does, but what, what he does is amazing. Um, he's an incredible person to have around our group. Um, he's a great leader um, and he's just got so much energy. He's our unofficial team manager. Um, so that probably distracts him more than anything. Um, books all our golf, um, any team functions, he's there. Um, he's had an amazing career and he's clearly been able to block out a lot of distractions throughout that. And that's what separates the best players in the world from, from the rest is they solely focus on their job. For him, it's been scoring runs and providing energy for our group and he's been able to do it for 15 years. It's incredible. And what do you think he can do now with not only Australia under pressure, but that added distraction chucked in for good measure? What do you expect from him? Um, I think what we've always seen him do, um, come out and take the game on. Um, anytime, anytime we've seen him with his back against the wall, he, he always stands up for us. Um, he's vitally important to our team. Um, the way we play, certainly the way we play at the front, up, up top. And um, for me personally, we've had some amazing partnerships over the last 12 to 18 months. So hopefully there's a few more in us. Mitch, um, just following up on what you kind of said before about, um, you know, the, those three fast bowlers, um, like you've played a lot with them and they probably never really had a, a touch up like that all at the same time. How are they kind of feeling? And, you know, what, what is it about those three players character that makes you think they'll, um, they might bounce back? Um, yeah, it was, we got jumped in the, in the first four hours of that power play. That's for sure. Finn Allen played unbelievably well. Um, I think if you look at all the, I mean, they're three of the, the best fast bowlers that Australia's ever had. Um, three of the best in the world. And, um, similarly to what I said about Davey is all the best players in the world bounce back from whatever setback or, I mean, that's a pretty minor setback, but um, I'm sure they'll be fired up. They love bowling out here, um, fast, bouncy wickets. So hopefully they'll be fired up and ready to go.